it's a battle in your head every day. Like I said, kind of like a form of torture. Being reminded of your past. You want to do good, but you keep doing wrong. prison in my mind is real for what I want to do I do not do but what I hate I do I'm pushed to and fro like the wind please God take away the pain within Amen. your principles and not forget your word be good to your servant I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired the torture, the thoughts, for these evil desires have me consumed like fire. Devil, you are a liar. See, I yearn to be set free from the demons who haunt me. Because it says in his word, he who the sun sets free is free indeed. The storm will come, but I will get through it. It's a battle every day. But the battle belongs to the Lord. Our strong tower, a mighty fortress, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is the one that I adore. Peace and blessings to the elect. I'd like to give all honor and glory to my Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Bahashim Yahweh Bahashim Rekahakwadash. And double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstar who do but well. And Shalom to the Bayasha Dabwada, which is the house of David. And if I could give my spiritual point of view to add to what the brother said, when you come to serve the Lord, prepare thyself for temptation. All of us are going to be tempted. And many times the enemy is within yourself. Sirach 21 says, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. So like the brother Nabala said, the desires and the vices that you were once attached to, you know, maybe friends that you've known your whole life, when they come around, they have demons on them. So this is constructive criticism from a doctoral perspective you have to depart from them this is the book of second corinthians 6 and 14 be ye not equally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion have light with darkness and we confess that we proclaim to be the children of the light because we were all once in darkness and remember that darkness how it was, learn to hate it. Hate the pseudoscience that Babylon presents, the replacement theology that we were all indoctrinated with growing up before we came into this walk. All the bread and circus, just being drunk from everything here. You know, and to some men, your only motivation was women. The Lord says in Ephesians 5 and 7, be not ye therefore partakers with them. So the best chance to fight this spiritual fight is to depart. Because we can't have one foot in the world and one in the truth. So you could be your worst enemy against your own self if you let these distractions keep you from why you've been awakened. All right? Demons try to attack us. Depression tries to come upon us. You know, you might be sulking in a dark room or something like that, man. You got to snap out of that. Okay? The Lord woke you up for a reason. To come out of that darkness. We're supposed to be new vessels for the Lord so he can operate in us. How can he use you if you're sulking? If you let demons overtake you? Right? This is Ephesians 5 and 8. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are you light in the Lord? Walk as children of light and have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. And see, that's the key. Reproving them so that unclean spirits can't continue to attack you. 
and we're surrounded by darkness. Like I said, them demons, they can hop on you. But the compelling point, what we're trying to achieve in this epistle, is that you have to continue to strive and grow. Okay, knowing that it's a test from the Lord. And the Lord ain't going to give you too much you can't handle. This faith walk isn't a cakewalk. We got to constantly examine ourselves. Evil and unclean spirits want to take you over. But again, understand, they work for your Habobashim Habashai. Okay? Read the book of Job. The spiritual demon Satan couldn't do anything to Job unless he had permission from the Most High. So again, you may have to depart from certain people that's full of sin, full of inequity, because it will make your walk more difficult. All right, stagnant. And the Lord said, sit not in the judgment of sinners, because their end thereof is the pit of hell. And we're trying to escape hell, which is this place, Babylon the Great, that's full of abominations of the ungodly. But we dwell here. So we're subsequent to wicked thoughts, urges that creep back in your mind, just the pressures of the daily grind sometimes. It's a little overwhelming. So you need the Heavenly Father and Yahweh Shai to get us through everything. This is Ecclesiasticus 2 and 5. It says, For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. It says, For gold is tried, and gold is a precious metal compared to his lively stones, that when the day comes, that if you're tried, you will be accounted acceptable when faced with the adversity that we speak about, right? Because the Lord's gonna be on your side. He said in the day of trouble, he's gonna be there for us. The trouble coming from Jacob that we read in Jeremiah 30. And I heard Apostle Ramla say a few times in a statement, and the statement was so simple. At the same time, it was so true. And he said, out of all the souls in the world, billions and billions of people, and we know that many were called, but few shall be chosen. But what's fascinating is he woke you up. So many people are still asleep. So many people are still in the darkness. Right? So when you're depressed and you can't sleep at night and you tossing and turning about real life issues, about stressful issues, about getting your rent paid and, you know, just whatever it is, man. Look, cast those worries and fears to the Lord, okay? We got too much that we trying to get through and you can't do it by yourself. And if you allow your mind to go astray, you're not following the Lord's ways, all right? This is Sirach 2 and 6, it says, believe in him and he will help thee, order thy way, all right? And trust in him. See, we have a power over us that gives us strength to overcome overcome the pain of lost ones okay losing a significant other who was down for you as long as you was doing worldly shit in the world right but see now that you come to serve the lord he or she is gone they gone in the wind and not one of us not one of us in this truth will be able to overcome the wicked one without the most high and yahweh shy so don't allow your mind to overcome you by doubting, because that's what we tend to do, is question ourselves sometimes. And if you continue to do that, it's gonna lead to you questioning the Lord. This is 2 Exodus 14, 14. It says, let go from mortal thoughts, cast away the burdens of man, and put off now the weak nature. Yeah, put off the weak nature, because Satan's job is to keep you away from the tree of life. And it can be simple things, like when you read the Bible, as soon as you pick it up, you start getting sleepy. Your eyes start getting heavy, getting tired. And I know it's not just me, right? Well, we have to fight through that. Okay, use the power given to you to rebuke those evil thoughts. Train yourself to rebuke as a red put off the weak nature, and that's by fleeing from mortal thoughts. Okay, 2nd Edges 14, 15. And set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee. All right? So that's what we have to do. 
put those heavy thoughts away so we can focus on prophecies. And when you fall, okay, because you will, we all fall, we all fall short, okay? The scriptures say a just man falls seven times. We're not perfect yet. We're still filthy garments. So set aside whatever that doesn't benefit your spirit to serve the Lord. Sirach 25 says, okay, let me just get it. All right, let me just get it. This is Sirach 25 and 13. It says, give me any plague but the plague of the heart. All right, and your heart is your mind. And that's what this epistle was going to. This is a daily battle that we're in. The Apostle Paul said he rejoiced by dying daily, meaning becoming more of a new creature in Yahweh Shai daily. Cutting off that old self, that sin that used to rule over you. Okay, the demons trying to leech on to you like a prey on a host. Y'all brothers know what I'm talking about. We have to overcome. This is Matthew 12 and 43. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and findeth none. Okay, unclean spirits want to return back into a tomb. Our bodies are what? They're temples. So it wants back in. You see that? Matthew 12 and 44. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he has come, he findeth it empty, swept and garnished. And this is speaking about an unclean spirit entering in and out of people. Okay, it says, Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in, dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So that first unclean spirit returns and brings back seven more. And there's one unclean spirit particularly that will continue to come back if you allow it. And that's the demon of time. It's the unclean spirit that sits back in the cut and just waits and waits and waits. Okay? Until they get the opportunity to come back. See, we in a spiritual warfare. This is a spiritual battle. But the beautiful thing about it is that the blood of Yahweh Shai is poured upon us. We are prisoners to him. We have weapons that aren't carnal to battle against these unclean spirits that play your mind. No, we got to put on the breastplate of righteousness. And he said, keep a helmet of salvation on because we in a valley of death. Matter of fact, learn that prayer and lean onto it because when the storm comes soon, we're all going to need a sound, clear mind to allow the Lord to lead us into the path of righteousness. How is the Lord going to direct us if your mind isn't clear? This is Psalms 23 and 3. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And see, that's the armor, the rod, the staff, along with the breastplate and the helmet of righteousness and that sword, which is your Bible, man, the banner. We have a defense against wicked thoughts. We have a defense against demons that attack. So be comforted that if you hold fast to what you've learned, and follow the Lamb with us wherever He goes. The Lord's going to keep His promise. Redemption draweth nigh. Repent. Hope this lesson has been edifying to the elect of Yahweh Bashim Abishai. This is the brother Azahah Moth. Wa Abba Shalom.